Nina, how are you? I said before, I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> oh, mate, dude, this is like you've done... This year for you has been like one of the biggest years of your life. I doubt this is something that you would need to get nervous for. Um, after all you've achieved, congratulations, firstly. What Thank a you. What a hectic, crazy, awesome period. Like the coolest thing ever. Has it been like a just a blur or are you like what, what where are you at um it has been a blur yeah and i think it's probably one of those things that i'll look back on you know five ten years from now and be like i won the olympics i had the best season of my whole life and you know when you're kind of in it it just goes too quickly but um yeah i'm i'm kind of having a break now so i'm in a bit of a reflection period and doing some journaling and and watching back some videos and photos and it's cool i like it yeah is there like is there a highlight off the top i know like it's pretty it's pretty it's pretty easy <laughs> I feel to like say you could answer this yeah, one that's, hey we asked like some really good questions here um <laughs> real original <yeah. laughs> okay let me rephrase oh, that I'm is sorry. there a favorite moment leading into the gold medal that's a that's an awesome question mm. Um, I think like more broadly, like it was the best week of my whole life. I think one of my, and I don't know if this is like a favorite moment, but the day before the final. So we have a qual Monday, rest Tuesday, final Wednesday. So on the Tuesday, my partner had flown in, um, and I'd been away like two months prior. So, you know, I was kind of on this journey in Europe, traveling, competing and, um, on that Tuesday, I went over to his apartment and I just like sat with him because I hadn't, you know, been with him for like two months and I just like bawled my eyes out and like bawled and bawled and bawled and bawled. And I think it was just this like overwhelming like emotion. It was all coming out of me. And he was like, why are you crying? It was like, oh, he was like, you must be so nervous and blah, blah, blah. I was like, I'm not nervous. I'm just feeling every emotion on steroids mm. and I feel like that was the best way to describe the Olympics it was like every emotion sadness happiness just at the top of the feeling I love speaking to Olympians because it there's no real other um competition like it I suppose like once every four years mm. you know you train a, a lot of athletes um that train a lot of sports are trained sorry like you know without saying like the pinnacle is once every four years. Yeah. So it's like training for a grand final every four years. You're at this period. You have to get your, your body right, your mental state right, your form right, your relationships right. Like all this stuff has to accumulate into one time. Yeah. Like I can imagine <laughs> those emotions like when you hit that point, you're yeah. like, okay, things are starting to come together. Yeah. Like what what was the hardest part of it? Like say you ticked all those boxes right because a yeah. lot of people, they might, might not have ticked those boxes, but you get mm -hmm. to that point and you go, no, I'm actually in – a good period here like do you yeah. just go do you try and treat it as normal or do you go well it's not normal so like yeah it's it's a great question and i think you summed it up so well right it it's not a grand final every year mm. it's a olympics every four years and i got to the olympic final knowing in myself that i had done everything mm. like i had ticked every single box i had left no stone unturned which was like the sickest feeling but that doesn't make the nerves like any better, right? I still mm. woke up that morning thinking I am so nervous, couldn't eat breakfast, couldn't eat lunch, just like, what if I drop the bag? What if I fumble? Like, this is mine to lose. And um, it was scary, it was yeah. really freaking scary. But yeah, like obviously all the psych stuff you did and you know no matter how prepared i was those nerves were like still going to be there mm. yeah so many things to to get through today i want to talk about like well like the psych stuff is is, is amazing we we're just touching off here a mutual friend i'm gonna say he's a lot closer to you than he is to me i've done one <laughs> podcast with him but he's one of my favorite people um jonah oliver yeah who you've done a lot of work with I'd love to talk about that i'd love to talk about actually like setting the scene of like how does one get into pole vaulting yeah. Like I'd never seen it. Yeah. I'd never I've never seen one yeah. in real life. Did you just do like I know this is a stupid question, yeah, but yeah, did you yeah. like just do little ass and it just like progresses into just this nicheness? Yeah, so obviously being from Perth, its own country over there. Yeah. Um Steve Hooker won the Beijing Olympics two thousand eight. And he was like a rock star in Perth. You know, Curly Is he a Western Australian? He that's where he won the Olympics. So he was training there. Got you. But he lives in Melbourne now. So, you know, he was like a rock star in Perth. Curly Haranga, you know, you can't miss him. And 
I think the year after I started just because I was at Little Athletics and I kind of got scouted essentially by his training group. Wow. And I went So to you this... were like competing in like long jump, triple jump yeah, and stuff like that and they were yep. like, okay, try this out. Yeah, come try this out. And um, yeah, I went to a go and try day and there were maybe like 30 kids and at the end of it there was like three and that's, you know, kind of how I started. bit random. You know, it was a mistake. I say like I, I didn't seek it out. I just, I did it. I knew I wanted to go to the Olympics for something. And then I guess when you kind of see Steve and his path and his journey and you're like, okay, well, maybe that's my avenue to mm. the Olympics. And yeah. Have you done much um, work with Steve Hooker over the years? Like, has he been um, someone that you've sort of sought out for like experience or anything? Or is it more just admire from um, past experiences? Well, obviously, like, so when I started, he was still around. Yeah, okay. So, you know, he would kind of see me as a little tacker, like mm. genuinely trying this thing out. Um so, yeah, like we definitely cross paths like so many times at training and um, he actually commentated my event at the Olympics. So, we're you know, we're in touch. I know I can call him whenever, but in terms of like if he's a bit of a mentor, I'd probably say not. Um, the men's and women's event are so different and something about an individual sport is like you have your way and you have your mm. way and there's a thousand ways to do it and I feel like – yeah, I, I definitely have my own specific way. I love your honesty. What do you mean by that? Like, are you working with your coach on those things or how do you mean you're working on your own specific way? Like, I, I get exactly what you're mm. saying, but I'm curious, like, what what tick, like, what makes you tick in that sense? I guess it's like, you know, someone could give you all the advice in the world, but until you, like, actually believe it yourself, like, you know, you're not going to learn it. Mm. Um, and I learned that very early on. I just, pole vault's one of those events and in athletics as well and in an individual sport, like you just got to work it out. You got to figure it out. Mm. Yeah. It's, um, it's really interesting about like just thinking about that in my own life. Like so many times I reckon as a young kid or guy, like I just take everyone as like, just gospel of what they'd say. They'd be like, oh, you can't do this. Like, oh, okay, I can't do that. Or like, you yeah. should do it like this. Like, oh, yeah, I better do that. Yeah. And then okay. do you just realize like no one fucking knows what they're doing? Like I've only like learned that in the past couple of years. Yeah. Like there is no recipe mm. to do anything. For sure. I'm probably getting a bit more philosophical on this than needed, <laughs> but like it's just a really interesting point. Like I love what, you, what you're saying. There's like so many things in my world of like people like, you know, you got to keep your episodes 45 minutes. Yep. Like they've got to be big on TikTok. Mm -hmm. you got to put big bios in them. It's like not referring to Joe Rogan, but he's the biggest podcast in the world. Yeah. He goes for like four hours. He doesn't tell you anything about the guests before <laughs> they're even on and yeah. people still listen. Yeah. It's interesting, right? It is. reason I asked about Steve Hooker to come back, I apologize for no, that okay. um, weird sort of spiral. Steve Hooker came to talk once I was I was listening to him talk about that um, the final he won because yeah. you know how he was injured and did the visualization insane and insane story crazy story yeah are you familiar yeah I think it was two thousand and nine Olympics I don't know um, the date um, uh, World Champs yeah but essentially he was like couldn't pole vault couldn't train and he basically did this like crazy visualization every day right mm. and then just like yeah. went out to the World Champs and like won them. In one jump. Yeah. Or two jumps. Like, yeah. It was just... And he'd never even done that in... No. Yeah. Like, insane. I feel like people don't really understand the, the gravity of that. And in those, like, competitions, as you'd know, like, a centimetre can be, like, the biggest improvement of anything. Um, take me to the to, to the Olympics, um, that gold medal uh, actual, you know, bout. Yeah. Um, what sort of took place? How was the... What, what do you call, like, a, a run? Oh, um, a jump? Like, obviously. I don't know, like a competition? No, sorry. Yeah, that, that makes more sense. <laughs> like the, yeah. Yeah. I'm a familiar with the competition. That is good. That is very good. Take me back to that competition. To the competition. Yeah. So we'll start back in the qualifying. So basically there's 32 girls in the qualifying on the Monday. And basically the story from that was like the world lead. So the girl who had jumped the highest in the world bailed out in the qualifying and she didn't make the final and she's like quite a big athlete anyways had a bad day she didn't make it to the final she was in tears and a lot of the media around that was um Caudry bails out and it's Kennedy's to lose essentially like Kennedy kind of has a free run and I was reading these articles and I was just getting so pissed off like I was getting 
really in my head about it. This is straight after the qualifying. I was getting really in my head about it and really worked up. Um, anyway, so that was one thing. And then another thing was they normally take 12 girls through to mm-hmm. – or, or males through to the Olympic final. They took 19 because of this – anyways, this stupid thing happened and it not, never – has happened before but basically 11 girls had qualified they have to take 12 and there was like a ninth way tie for 12th so they had to take all nine girls plus the 11 so there were what yeah there was 19 or 20 girls which is annoying as if you're like qualifying in the top 11 my gosh i'm so so the the first thing happened and then they were taking 20 (laughs) girls through to the final so there was just a few things that was getting in my head and I could like recognize that straight away I was like Nina you're feeling pissed off about this and this you know be angry for an hour vent it all out get it out speak to people and then move on as soon as you can because this final is going to be won like right now and it's going to be won on how you're going to deal with this because everyone was really pissed off about how they were taking so many Mm -hmm. girls through and I kind of just told myself like they're pissed off but I'm going to get on with it quicker so that was kind of the beginning um and I also kind of knew you know a pole vault competition is as long as it is normally um just to give some context in a normal like diamond league which is like our our main tour they take eight people there's eight girls competing so in the biggest competition of my whole life at the olympic final there was going to be 20 and it was like okay I feel like this is something I've never had to deal with before and none of the other girls had as well, but it was like, okay, how are you going to deal with this? Mm. This Olympics is going to be one with this moment and figuring out how you're going to do it. So, sorry, jump, but like no, double okay. the time that double it would normally time. take, yeah. double, double and a bit the girls. Yeah. Has there been times like in competitions where before this and, and, and that you'd learnt to like just embrace these challenges like of like going look you're at the biggest day as we just said before everything was sort of going somewhat pretty good yep. like your partners come over feeling yep. healthy yeah then in the main event they're going now nah, we're going to bring like six more girls in yeah that must have been somewhat annoying oh i was like i was genuinely pissed off like it was like okay i'm feeling so prepared again for some context i had won the two diamond leagues leading in so yep. i was like the dead you're favorite. in form i was in form and you know i genuinely felt like it was mine to lose and and of course I'd like learned these techniques about how to, you know, deal with stress and adversity and bloody, bloody, blah. I'd been doing it my whole career, mm. but it was like, okay, now you have to do that on the biggest stage and whoever is going to deal with this adversity the best is going to win. And I truly believe that. Yeah. What did you do? So I sat down with my sports psych <laughs> the day before. Is this Jonah? Or this is, is Jonah. It, yeah. Jonah was at the Olympics and Jonah was genuinely such a pivotal part in my journey. Um, and I kind of said, I was like, I'm feeling angry about so many girls. I'm feeling angry about those media articles. And I know for a fact, Jonah, that the winner is going to be the person that can deal with this mm-hmm. adversity the best. So let's figure out a plan and let's roll with it. So got on my emotion out, made a plan. And one key thing, you know, that I took away from that meeting was, rise above that chaos and just look at it for what it is. It's an Olympic final, like expect the unexpected, you know, 20 girls, expect it um, and just deal with it. It's awesome. I love it. It's uh, it's something that it's so transferable into like any situation. Mm, yeah. um, I can always find, or I'm sure anyone listening out there can find themselves focusing on like the nitty gritty of any situation. This yeah. is happening, that's happening. But to, but to be able to like rise above, look at it, from like a bigger picture is yeah. is obviously um, yeah pretty pivotal in those moments and look mm. what can be achieved if not like if you hadn't have had that outlook on it or not um, realised that earlier I'm mm. sure there was other girls in that comp that didn't they focus on the wrong things burn their energy on the wrong stuff yeah exactly and you know it's, it's just a classic right it's it's responding how you want to respond and looking at it for what it is and just choosing how you want to respond to it but you have to do that in the biggest context of your life yeah i feel like this conversation is not giving it like as much as hard as it would actually be <laughs> when you're like actually there focusing on it but yeah. it's uh, it's very special so okay so there's the bigger field yeah um how did you perform like how was it all tracking yeah, yeah. so 
It was ob- it was obviously good. You know, I had yeah, a sure. <laughs> no, I I had a great warm up. Um, all my friends, all my family were in the stands. Mm. Vibes were good. I was feeling awesome. Um, you know, we did the walkouts. You know, we waved to the crowd. They say our names, whatever. Cool, cool, cool. Um, the competition starts. Um, bombed the first height cleared it by like heaps like okay we're on here like mm. um bomb the second height hell yeah just to put again some context you know we're waiting like 45 minutes to an hour between jumps because there was just so many people that's so long it was and they actually had to bring the competition forward because there were so many girls they had to move the start time of the olympics because <laughs> just so many people um the bar gets to 470 you know a kind of a critical height um, I miss it on my first attempt and I was just like fuming. There's this thing in pole vault where you kind of do a good miss. It was like a really good miss. It's yeah. like I was too good for that pole. Um, I love that out. That's it. That's that's really, <laughs> I was too yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. You were too good. <laughs> I was yeah. too good. Um, cleared it on my second attempt. It was fine. But obviously in that moment, all my competitors had cleared it on their first attempt. Pole vault's a really interesting one where count back is super important really important you get three attempts basically so i know count back in golf but can you explain is it a similar process to that so if you draw with someone at the end yeah and you've only had like one good miss and they've had three good misses yeah you'd win yes essentially yeah. it was yeah. kind of like you get three attempts and let's say we both clear 470 miss 480 if i had cleared 470 on my first attempt and yeah. they had done it in the second yeah i'd win yeah um so They'd cleared it on their first attempt. I missed it. Oh, a bit shaky, whatever. I went back, cleared it on my second. But obviously when you miss that, right, the thoughts kind of start to creep in. Shit, what if I make a mistake on my second and then I'm on my third attempt and then I crumble or, you know, I make a mistake. And so all those thoughts kind of happen. But again, it was like, shut up, brain. Like, I got this. Mm. Um, and just, again, the Olympics was genuinely the best competition i had ever done like 480 first attempt 485 first attempt um there were probably four girls left at 485 i was last in the jumping order so i see my competitors before me miss 485 one's out another one misses it another one misses it and i'm like nina this is my chance to jump into the lead here get on my first attempt and I just know I'm like that is so important like Mm. just you know that's kind of where the emotion starts to come out right like fierce palms like let's go (laughs) like I've seen you girls crumble and it's also gonna sound so arrogant but like I just like to make my celebrations like quite big yes you know I'm gonna look at these girls in the eye and and celebrate like they like your turn <laughs> i'm scared of that sorry that's so good that's so good so there is a bit of like there honestly is from what you're saying a, that psyche part of it to try and psych people out into it yeah a, a little bit yeah. um anyways i clear it on my first attempt i'm in the lead they come back clear it on their second attempt so they're still in the competition there were there were like three or four girls left essentially i knew i had like won a medal The bar goes to 490. My personal best is 491. So we're in like hectic territory. Um, Again, context, the year before, Katie Moon and myself shared the gold medal at 490. Mm -hmm. So I cleared that one last year in my third attempt. So the bar goes to 490. I see two girls miss it, my two biggest competitors. Again, I'm on that runway thinking, babe, like clear it on this first attempt and like this medal is like... Is basically yours. And same thing. I go through my processes um, and I don't want to sound arrogant, but I felt like I could have competed at the Olympics with my eyes closed. Like that's genuinely like how yeah. dialed in I was. That's so cool. Like at the start of the season, every single, like every single training session I did, I like replicated that exact routine, that exact process that I was gonna do at the Olympics. So that routine was like down pack. My thoughts were down pack, my cues were down pack. Like I just, I knew what I was doing. I had like never been so prepared in my life for something. That's so sick. I, I, I think people <laughs> listening will not find that arrogant whatsoever because as, a, as an individual athlete, and even if they, they were, you need to, like your biggest supporter has to be yourself, right? Like yeah. I, I've never played individual sport and it's mm-hmm. something that I've been so, 
fascinated with like the mindset of, of someone like yourself that competes at the Olympics because you have to be your own champion like you have to be thinking you're the best because if you don't like no one else will yeah um so many questions here but with that you're talking about before about how you were so dialed in like yeah is there a checklist that goes off in your head like and again it might not be relevant or yeah. it might not be um make sense to us listening because we don't mm. know what you're saying but is it like yeah. all right three deep breaths run 20 do that like do you just have something like that or is it change um it, it's a bit of a you know a lot of people talk about performance routine and yeah i was never really a fan of it until i got to that big level where those thoughts really do start to creep in mm. and if you're not aware of those thoughts then they're going to overtake your mind and you know you're probably going to crumble um so i just made sure my routine was so down packed that I knew when to listen to those thoughts. I'd block mm. them out. I'd know when to repeat my cues. I know when to be in my body, take deep breaths. And, you know, I know I knew those parts in my run up that I had to focus on. And I knew you, I, I knew my cues backwards. Like, yeah. I just, I know my sports so well. <laughs> see. Hell, um, this is a strange question, but is everyone's pole the same weight? Good question. No. You can basically jump on anything you want. I could jump on a broomstick, honestly. That was like what a really, yeah, I was really curious of that because I was like, yeah. there could, knowing your equipment, like, yeah. is huge. But there would have to be some regulations on them, right? Like the length. No, really? Nothing. Yeah. No Are they all quite, si does everyone use quite similar stuff or can it vary? Like different bends? Um, like There's basically maybe like three main Pole Manufacturers brands, yep. yeah, yeah, um, and then in that there are different like lengths. So I jump on a four forty five pole, four mm. meters, forty five centimeters. Other girls might jump on a four sixty pole um, or a four thirty pole. Yeah, men jump on like a five twenty pole, um, and then you have basically like different stiffnesses of my set of poles. So I, you know, at the Olympics, you know, I have about ten poles on my back. So um, essentially, the stiffer the pole, the higher you're going to jump. And like traveling with them insane like well, where, like who's <laughs> checking them in like what uh, do they stay that uh, long it's insane are you gonna are you about to say do they fold up don't ask that question i was not gonna <laughs> i was not gonna don't ask be one that. Of those people. i didn't i didn't ask that you caught me out. i was not gonna ask that but i'm just imagining checking that in oh it's insane it's so you're carrying it like yes form dude like through the airport like um, you know, I you're... didn't ask if they fold up. I, I knew, I, I knew that it didn't. Fold I up. saved you before yeah. you asked a dumb question. You're welcome. Um, no, like you're getting to the airport three hours before to check in because it basically the poles like, um, you know, they go on before all the luggage goes on. So you have to be the first one at the airport. Hmm. So you make sure you book a special plane ticket and basically only certain airlines and certain aircrafts carry them. So, um, I'm booking, I'm booking all of that. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, do you have someone that helps you with that now? Yes. Like, so that's just like my manager. Does yeah, that. great. Because yeah. one thing that's like also really cool to talk about with um, individual athletes is like the process, right, of being like an individual athlete to then becoming a gold medalist. Yeah. And, and there's a process there in between that takes place oh, of being, like yeah. the support that then takes over and other brands. And, you know, I look at you now as a gold, a gold medalist, but you're a businesswoman. Like you, like you got ambassadorships, yeah. like you're killing it. Like everything Thanks. else you're doing in your life. Yeah. How, um, well, one, the, the question is like, how important is it? But I suppose it's not that important. It's, it's pivotal to be able to do that, to actually like create mm. it as a, a full-time thing. Yeah, of course. So in terms of like, Oh, not not so much financial, but in terms yeah. of like, what was your goals? I suppose yeah. around of going, look, like I want to win a gold medal, but also yeah. too along the way, like how can I get um, ambassador partnerships? Yeah. Like how does that take place? I guess like the best way to put it, and the best way I explain it to people is like being in an individual sport that mm. you know athletics. It you know it's popular every four years, and that's just the reality of it. If I'm not jumping high and if I'm not performing, I'm the one not getting paid. Like, it's as simple as that. You know, my coaches are still going to get paid. My psychologist is still going to get paid, but I won't be paid. Well, I will, but do you know what I mean? Yeah. So most of the accountability is on yourself. Mm. And, you know, some people can look at that how they want, but I am obsessed with that. Do you like, like is it? Do, do you reckon it. the stress brings out the most, the best in you? Is it stressful for you? Well, I think it's in terms of like... You know, I'm the Olympic gold medalist now, but I only stopped working a part-time job back in 2021. 
2022. Mm. So I've only been doing this, you know, full time essentially for a few years. Mm. So I think the thing with that was like, if I don't get to, you know, the top eight in the world, or if I don't get to the top of my sport, I'm not going to get paid. And there was, you know, a moment kind of through COVID. I know that was really tough for a lot of people, but it was like, what the hell am I doing? Mm. Like I was maybe top 30 in the world. It was like, what the hell am I doing? Like working a job, I'm studying uni, I'm doing this pop vault thing. That, like I'm, you know, I have some talent out, but like, what do you want to get out of the sport? Like genuinely, like Nina, what do you want to do? And I just asked myself some tough questions and I kind of just like went on this journey of like, there were, there were a few girls in my training group who were like older than me and I saw their career kind of go nowhere in the nicest way possible. Yeah. But I saw how hard they worked and it was like, I don't want to do that. Like, let's make something of this. Like, let's find out what my limits and my potentials are. And I guess that's kind of how it all, you know, this gold medal journey kind of mm. really um, <clears throat> started. Um, I hope this makes sense. But when you were at that period, say 2021, and you're yeah. like, you know, doing a bit of uni, a bit of work, a yeah. bit of pole vaulting, do you think yeah. like you had to nearly just go, you know what, fuck this. Like I have to go all in on this to put 100% in. Otherwise you're sort of just like dancing in the middle of being good at three things and not good at one. 100%. And I remember having this conversation with my partner and a few friends and it was kind of like, oh, I feel bad not contributing to the relationship. You're working full time, you're hustling and I'm just kind of out here half getting paid for this sport that I kind of do. And he was kind of like, well, why don't you just go all in on it? Like, let's just, let's put a time cap on it. But money is like not important for right now. And and just again, for context, I was getting AAS funding. So it was enough to live on, but you know, mm. I wasn't saving anything. And it yeah. was like, yeah, let's just put all my eggs on in one basket and really just go on this journey and, and see what I can do. And, you know, that was in 2020 where, you know, I asked myself these tough questions, middle of COVID, and that was a forced break. Six months later, I had broken the Australian record. So it was kind of like, okay, like things are starting to work. Like I'm seeing results. Tokyo Olympics came around. I bombed out. I didn't make the final. It was a shit show. Um, kept hustling 2022. Came third at the World Championships. And then after that year was the first time I signed my first, like, I'd say decent contract where it was like, okay, like I can do this full time and like, this is sick. So Who was that with? That's with Puma. Oh, we love them. Yeah. Shout out Fantastic. Puma. <laughs> Fantastic. That's so good. Yeah. Um, I love that. I'm so wrapped for you on that because it's Thanks. such a, uh, um, and I'm curious to whether you get the same, um, not, not comparing us whatsoever. I've done absolutely nothing for my country, but what <laughs> I was comparing was sometimes young, younger, um, people might ask advice around like, oh, how do, um, how do you go full time into a certain thing? Yeah, and it's something um, you know people get awkward about asking about money, which I, mm. I you know it's trans, it's it's it is an awkward topic to talk about. But I do feel like somewhat when you're young, I do have a bit of a recipe for that, and it's similar to what you said before about going. You know what? Work out what you need to make in a year. Like yeah. literally, work out what you need to survive. Yeah reverse engineer that and try and find somewhere. So it might be a bit of AIS subsidy, yeah. might be one contract deal with Puma, then yeah. you're okay, bang. I, I don't need to make any more money. Now yeah. it's time to just grind yeah. and hustle and anything on top of that mm. is bonus. For sure. And like, as you said, you got that opportunity to do that yeah. and, and everyone's financial situation is different. I'm not you know, mm. contemplating that at all. You've got to have good people around you too, but you can do it at any level that you need. Yeah. Then you went and broke the record in like the first six months and it's like, yeah. and look, there's probably a lot of other stories that it doesn't work yeah. out, but at least yeah. you've fucking given it a crack. For sure. I think just on the money thing, like another way I kind of looked at it was like, okay, I need, let's just, let's just say like a new mattress yeah. or like I need, um, I don't know, I need to eat like really good quality food or you know, I need recovery boots, something like mm. that. And it was like, okay, I'm going to spend this money and it's like an investment and it's going to pay off later. Yeah. Right. And I'm not saving anything, but it's an investment and it's an investment. And, you know, I guess it's finally paid off, right? Mm. Like that's kind of how I looked at it. But, and again, without coming across too much of an idiot here, because people, I, I get that things are different, but you can, if you do have that, um, the the thought processes around that it will mm. pay you back yeah. but if you're doing it half-hearted it won't like it 
it won't. I, I do think the same thing. I bought a mattress like recently. I was like, okay. spend half their life asleep. Yeah. Like I want to be treating myself to a good oh, sleep. Yes. If I sleep well, I'm going to be a better version of myself. I'm going to be less anxious. I'm going to yeah. be able to like get up, spend time with my family, yeah. come to work, be better. Yeah. Work harder. I'll be tired. I'll sleep better. Like, yes. Yeah. Like, like yeah. you put it so simply, like so true. Like I'm going to buy the best quality, like meat, veg, whatever. And yeah. I'm going to spend that extra, like. 50 bucks more at my supermarket shop because like that is fuel like that is actually what's recovering my muscles mm. and you know they're like, oh fuck your grocery bill is so expensive <laughs> but, like, but you're an athlete like you you, you, know, you treat yourself well yeah the um dom condo i don't know if you've heard of dom dom um is a ripping um dietitian she's a doctor of dietetics but she works at Richmond. She works a bit with the VIS, I think. Okay. And she was talking about this in terms of like a car. Okay. And like, you know, when you go like fill up for fuel, it's like, what would you put into your car? Like yeah. if you got a brand new car, yeah. you put the cheap or the or the other one in, it's like, well, you want to look after your car. Like that's yeah. like literally what goes in your body is how you're going to feel. For sure. I don't know if I just age now, maybe because I have eaten so healthy previously. Now, if I do eat something shit like i actually walk around and feel yeah, like dude, terrible feel is that yeah yeah i'm in my break now and i'm like oh god i'm here to go are you actually are you, are you actually giving yourself like what do you look yeah, like what's I'm your like a hardcore break. what's your um your cheat meal that you're really going hard at the moment oh just literally whatever i want if i <laughs> want that pastry at breakfast i'm gonna have that pastry That's at breakfast. So good. like fuck it <laughs> so good you're um you said before about your management company always human you've got yourself mary fowler and jess fox jess fox yeah I'm sure others, there's there's a lot of others as well. Like, what yeah. have you taken from, I suppose, the last couple of years of just like women in sport and like, yeah. you know, obviously with the Matildas, so um, Jess Fox at the Olympics as yeah. well. Like, has it been pretty crazy to see like oh. other? Even just like you know the what Matildas was twenty. 23 they like yeah. lit up australia right like genuinely lit up australia and if you really get to the like nitty-gritty of that sport of that story it was like no one was touching the men's jerseys like everyone was touching the mm. women's jersey and you know mary fowler and all those girls are like household names now and everyone was watching them at the olympics you know i know they didn't have the performance that they wanted but I just think it's so great. And then even the AFLW coming up, like love that super netball, like love that. Like I think also just consciously trying to consume women in sport, yeah. um, I think is a really important um, thing, right? You know, we turn on the TV, there's there's male football and love it, but um, are you going to turn on the TV when the AFLW kind of season is on? So consciously seeking out those games, going to those games, you know, following those girls on Instagram, just – you know it's pretty cool to see like what those girls have been up to and i love like I was, i'm actually curious to ask you about this too is in their sport they have to move a lot right and you do a lot of traveling yourself too with the diamond league like that's all across europe yeah right so essentially yeah. essentially yeah. um and Mackenzie Arnold at the moment like i looked at her rap sheet probably the wrong word her um timeline <laughs> <Rap> <laughs> she hasn't <laughs> been arrested from what i know from what i know um uh, and it was like perth queensland um, UK back yeah. to America, yeah. some other weird country somewhere back to the states. Europe, yeah. like, do you see yourself moving around? Like, where do you want to base yourself, or do you think it will be Australia for the time being? Yeah, it it is Australia. Yeah. Um, like born and bred, love Australia, love mm. Perth. You know, our season runs from essentially our international season from May to the middle of September. So, mm. um, I'm doing that Europe trip and then coming back to australia maybe like two or th maybe two times in that so and then you know in our australian domestic season is is runs over summer i'm sometimes going to melbourne sometimes going to sydney but yeah when does it pick back up like what's the the timeline view at the moment yeah i'm dude i'm on like the fattest break like i said like I don't even want to think about training, hey. So I will probably start back in late November, mm -hmm. early December, and um, the World Championships happen every two years. So they're next September. So I have a little while. So good. Yeah. Um, can we go back to the Olympics? What – a lot of people always talk about the Athlete Village. Yeah. What was that like this what year, like? being a part of it? It was cool. And who do you like? Do you, do you get your own room, or do you were you rooming with someone? Yeah, or? I had a roomie, and thank God she was like my best friend. Like she, in she's awesome. Pole vaulting as well. No, or? her name's Liz Clay. And oh no, Liz Clay. Yeah, she's yeah, a hurdler. She's a hurdler. Yeah, we just get on like a house. She's got a mass fire. six pack. 
Dude, probably one of the best six packs I've insane. ever seen. Like, I'm like, bitch, put your shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, is that you can bleep that as long as you say it? I think it's, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, um. Yeah. So thank God we got on our house like on fire because you're spending like you know two weeks prior with this person and then mm. you know another two weeks in the village like living together in this tiny space and you know single beds but the village didn't have air con and the mattresses obviously like well the beds were made out of cardboard yeah and the mattresses like i'm all for sustainability but these mattresses were made out not of, when you're at the olympics man. Um, so i think that's yeah. my point <laughs> they were made out of like recycled plastic bottles so it was like oh god i've spent all this money on my health and my journey and like you know everything getting me to this point and i have to sleep in no air con and um you know a plastic mattress mm. which again great i'm glad the olympics did that but the Australian Olympic Committee like really pulled through and got everyone air cons and got everyone mattress toppers and basically just allowed us to do our thing. Well, to the best we can. Is it as sick? Is it as a sick as experience as everyone makes it out to be? I feel like walking around with the world's best athletes, like yeah, you know, there's people from everywhere. The dream team's there. There's yeah, just, there's just everything going on. Like, do you get to like? you know cross paths with different people like who was yeah. some of the people that you met you were just like this is crazy um, like it's obviously cool i think before your event you know you're so in your zone that your head's down you're going to the food hall it's you know it was kind of like i haven't come this far to be distracted mm. by like some famous person in the village like i just haven't yeah, that sounds so See, stupid. like that's the difference between you and me i'm like i'm already just <laughs> I'm like sorry. there just looking around like yeah, trying to like make friends and yeah. you're just like fuck off I'm don't talk to me zone, like, literally, yeah. don't fucking talk to me um no <laughs> so brutal but you know once your competition's done and, and you can you can see the energy shifting right mm. like the swimmers finish before us and they like lighten up they have some fun and then the uh, athletics is on and then they slowly start finishing and then once you get to like the closing ceremony and the after party it's like whoa like you have a personality like Mm. where has that been for the last two weeks what would be on reflection of what you are now and i suppose you're still in that period of just reflecting of the past sort of time that you've been through what would you sit down now and say like some of your biggest bits of advice to any aspiring young athletes or anyone that just wants to like you know compete in in life itself what yeah. what, what have been your biggest wins do you think oh i feel like that's such a good question maybe like what's the best piece of advice i've ever been given would just and i think i say this because like i didn't have this as a kid it would just be like the permission to like dream and like dream as big as you can mm. and also just like you get to a place where like you really do believe in yourself. I think Ben Crow said this. He said like, you know, like someone's got to win. Like, and why do you have to read about someone else's success? Like, why can't they read about you? And that really resonated with me. And it was like, fuck, like, why do I have to read about all these other girls' success? Like, why can't I win? Like, genuinely, why can't I win? And I really didn't have that, you know, three, two, even a year ago and – um, like I said, I, I walked into that final knowing I actually have this bit in have this piece in my, in my journal that I read back a few days ago and it was probably in like April this year. And it said like, I just know I'm going to win the Olympics. And I genuinely believe that I'm like the best vaulter out there. Mm. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I just think that's like so cool. Like considering how kind of where my self-belief was three years ago. Just insane. Does the belief come first and then the actions prevail? Or do you think the yeah. actions come then the belief? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think for me personally, and, you know, I think that's maybe being a female in sport, I really had to, um, you know, my skills came first. They're mm. like the building blocks, right? They're the cake and then that confidence, confidence versus competent mm. confidence like that confidence that cherry on top of the cake those sprinkles right like that's the magic stuff which um you don't need that stuff to perform well i don't think mm. confidence versus competence that's one of the all time it's great like, isn't it it's um it's so just good. for someone out there who maybe hasn't listened to jonah can you yeah put that into your own words how that relates to your performance like you yeah. know it's a it's an awesome analogy yeah i guess like competence is like how competent i am in my pole vaulting you know your podcasting like you're so competent i'm so competent at pole vault 
people are competent at their work, um, whatever it is, but that confidence might not be there. Like it wasn't there for me when I was young, right? So confidence, I, I again, I feel like that comes second. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's almost like, yeah, exactly what you said, but, you know, I can't be confident pole vaulting because I'm not competent doing it. Yeah. So you have to be competent to be confident. Yeah, I still... Um, I, I think about that all the time. It's such a, it's such a good uh, analogy that I don't know if Johnny came up with it, but I'm going to give him, um, yeah, we'll credit f- him. full full credit <laughs> for him. Hey, um, when you finished up, did you travel or did you you went and competed a few more times? And you, what, what was yeah. like? Were you just on like a bit of flows? Like, why did you keep it? going? What was the the goals around keeping competing, and staying um, over there? Essentially, it's like how we get paid. Like, yeah. this is my job, right? Yeah. So. Won the Olympics, stayed in Paris, stayed in the village for a week, party, like genuinely had the best week of my whole entire life. I think I've peaked, like mm. honestly. Um, came back to Australia, did a lot of media stuff, you know, you kind of just have to do that while the Olympics is still relevant. And then I went back to Europe and I had three more Diamond Leagues. And essentially the Diamond Leagues are our world tour event and then there's a final at the end and you have to qualify for the final. So... Went to Rome, went to, oh, what was the other one? Zurich and then Brussels. Um, and trust me, like I did not want to get back on that plane. I mm. was so tired mentally, physically, like I was so done. Um, went there and I kind of just told myself, like, you know, like I know you're not feeling good. I know you're, you know, not that motivated right now, but that doesn't matter. Like go do your job. You are so competent at this. You know, I can pop up with my eyes closed, just go get the job done and, and the results will follow. So I ended up winning those last three competitions, which I don't know how I did that. That's so good. I was holding on by a thread. <laughs> did, um, is, it, is it lonely oh, traveling? Yeah. Like, do you have someone with you the whole time or is it on and off people are coming back and forth? Because it's a long stint to be away. It like, is. It, it's a bit of both. You know, you go to these competitions and there's obviously all your competitors yeah. there. Have you watched Sprint on Netflix? Oh, yeah, I have seen the first episode. I, actually, I watched the one of the, um, do you know, the American, is he Canadian or American? The, the, uh, the He's a bit weird, the sprinter, you know, the guy that's. Oh, Noah Lyles. No, yeah. Noah? Yeah. Yeah. Like the, yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe say no one likes him. I think people do like him or they don't like him. They, is he a bit either, weird? they either like him or they don't. I or like Fred him. Curley, maybe? You know, no, it's uh, Lyles. Noah. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, he won the 100 at the Olympics yeah. and then, yeah. Um, I think if you watch Sprint, I think that just like sums up your, like my life yeah, really right. well. You, you basically travel around the world to these amazing places and a lot of the time you're on your own or with your coach and, but you have to like sit in the dining hall and share a hotel with like your biggest competitors. Like it's a really weird foreign thing. Before we talk more about um, competition, just a quick segment into traveling because I suppose yeah. that's like, you must enjoy it if it's a part of your job. Have you found any like favorite places whilst you've been away or have you not had the chance to actually like relax in, in them? It's a bit of a weird one. Um, you know, you're, let's say I'm competing on a Saturday in mm-hmm. London. I'm flying in on Thursday afternoon, Friday, you're maybe doing a shakeout, getting a coffee with, you know, whoever's around and Saturday's the competition. So in and out. you want to save your legs, you know, you're not, doing too much touristy stuff. Sometimes you might tack on a trip at the end. Hey, can you book my flight for the Monday? I want to, you know, yeah. look around Sunday and Monday. But yeah, I think I have favorite like competitions. I like the track. I like the way the meat um, runs. I like the food in the hotel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a good way to be. Where's your favorite comp? I love Zurich. Yeah. I just love Switzerland. I don't know why, but um, Monaco is also really cool. Yeah, it sounds beautiful. Um, you were saying before around how, you know, you wrote in your diary in April. Yeah. And you were saying, like, I believe I'm the best mm. um, pole holder in the world. I'm going to yeah. win the Olympics. Yeah. Okay, so you've done that. Yeah. Do you need to revisit? Because, like, a lot of that, the way that got you to where you are, correct me if I'm wrong, mm. is, is like, forecasting, like, I'm going to do this. Yeah. Right? So now you've done it. Do you need to then go, like, I'm the best now. Like, what's, like, what's next? Or... Do you keep the same mentality? I don't know. I think it's a good question. Yeah, I'm um, almost more curious. Can I give context to yeah, this? I'm just sure. thinking about yeah. it, and I'm not trying. I'm just really trying to explain the question better. Is I spoke to Jay Waterman a while ago mm-hmm. on the Potter West Coast guy, yeah. and he'd been like a fringe player his whole career, 
And then all of a sudden he had a really good year yeah. and made all Australian. And then he's like, fuck, like the way I got to being all Australian mm. was being like, I want people to, you know, treat me, you know, respect me, rate me. I want to be this player, right? Then you make and be, you become that player. Yeah. You become that athlete. Yeah. You then have to be like, what's ne- like, what's the next thing? I have to maintain this. I have to go better. Yeah. Because if you keep that same thing, it's probably not going to work anymore. For sure. Oh. Does that does that relate to you? Oh, or? 100%. Yeah. It's like you're almost addicted to this high and this journey. And for me, it's about like figuring out how to like solve issues and get the best out of myself. Mm. So what I really enjoy is like every season, every year, like it brings a new challenge, you know, back in 2020, it was like, who am I and why the fuck am I doing this sport? You know, this year's challenge was, I, I genuinely think I can win the Olympics. Like, can I do it? You know, like, can I do it? And I know next season's um, thing is going to be like, well, now you're like the damn Olympic champion. Like, how are you going to back up? like yeah what and go again yeah and you know are those pressures are those doubts like what's it going to bring and um i guess it's about like the skills i've learned along the way and it's like you know what I, i'm probably gonna well, i'm definitely gonna have to learn new skills and figure out this new challenge that i've never faced before yeah like you, you're you're coming from it from a different position now of like yeah. being the champion and and i i always like to like look outside the box and and learn from people's mistake and almost um, what's the word like predict mm-hmm. what's going to happen forecast forecast I'm I'm excited you know yeah the first thing that comes to mind is that okay like let's look at last Olympics you know gold medalists or or any Olympics gold medalists and and read their stories and yeah. found out how they felt the year after and how their season went and it's like let's learn from their mistakes before I make my own right so it, it's it literally was my next thing I was thinking was like who has helped you get to you where you have got to so mm. maybe people that you don't even know or like people that have inspired you to like you yeah. know you've read a book you listen to a podcast that you've won something from and then the second part of that is like yeah who do you want to like sort of try and learn more about yeah oh. you might not have reflected yet on the second yeah, part but no. even just you were mentioning before about like you know ben crow jonah oliver yeah, yeah. you've sort of learned a bit from these people is there anyone yeah. else that has been big in the sense to to get you to where you've you've got to i think i think they're definitely the two people yeah. and i also think it's about and this might contradict what i said before about learning off people but it's really just going on this like self it sounds so woo woo but it's I know, like man, going trust on me. this like they call me woken friends sometimes <laughs> and it's 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 not like oh. it it's so cringe but it's so true yes. so like yeah and like apart okay so like this is just an example of like i feel give like it to me. how how in depth i i work as an individual athlete right so it's like okay like wake up go to training great you know, have lunch and then I might have physio or like, you know, sports dietitian. And then in the afternoon, I'm not planning anything and I'm putting three hours aside and I'm just at home, but it's like, okay. Or, you know, I could be going for a walk, but it's like, okay, like three hours of listening to a podcast or reading a section of a book or doing something that's for your mind and for this like dreaming kind of, I don't know, it sounds so woo-woo. And, you know, my housemates, some of my friends are like, oh, what did you do this afternoon? And I say, oh, I just think I worked really hard, but I'm not going to like say how I worked. Yeah. <laughs> I let it, I, you know, I laid in the backyard in my bikini and just like read my book. Like I'm yeah. working so hard. Like, <laughs> You know, it's funny because like before I met you um, and even like a few times today I've had this chat and it just shows you, you, you're built different in that sense. Like you, you think about things so differently. Like there's been 10 times where I'm thinking about like what it'd be like at the village or traveling or like just making new mates and you're like, no, nah, like I'm here to do a job. Yeah. Do you, do you struggle to switch off or do you think that you can access that side of yourself easily? Like how are you now? Yeah. Like. It's a great question. I think I've. Cause it's a habit. It's a habit. It's a habit, but I've, I again, over this journey, I've learned that I need to switch off and I've learned how to switch off. Yeah, but it's not, you have? Okay. I have. I really have. Teach me. And, you know, just before where I was like, you know what, I'm having a goddamn break because I need it because yeah. I can't go for another four years without a break. And, you know, that that's, how does that look? That's letting those anxieties go of, okay, well, I'm going to get out of shape and I'm going to lose my muscles and, yeah, I might put on a few kilos and whatever but it's like 
Nina, like I need to do that to be at my best self in a year's time. Mm. And again, it kind of comes back to that idea of like you're investing in this process of the money thing, right? But it looks different and it looks, if you take a snapshot of my life right now, you bet you're not a professional athlete. But if you take a snapshot next September, like I bet you like, it's late. you know, but even just, you know, that thing you said about like, okay, like I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to go on this holiday, like, you know, by myself, you know, I just, for example, like I went away, this is so stupid, but I went away on like a solo trip last weekend by myself because it was like, I know I need to just have some quiet didn't have phone reception, didn't have Wi-Fi, was scared shitless, but it was like, Nina, like, just give yourself, you know, 24, 48 hours to just sit with your thoughts and bring a diary and see what comes up and just allowing yourself to have that opportunity for thoughts that might not have come in before when you're on your phone. Do you know what I mean? I do. It's, it's, a, um, it's so much harder. That, like, that's scary for me. I hate being by myself. I think it's scary for a lot of people. Yeah, I fucking hate it. Like, <laughs> See, I'd... I always get to the dark knot of my thoughts. <laughs> nah, jeez. It sounds like my worst nightmare doing that. But um, I recently went on a trip as well with with my wife and, and son and we yeah. had um, some people helping us with uh, Max. So, like, it freed up my time a lot. Yeah. And it, it actually, like, had the the opposite effect on me. Just going, like, fuck, you need to work on this. You need to work on being by yourself. Because, okay. like, I was just... You know that feeling before yeah. of like you were saying like, am I losing shape? Am I getting out of condition? Am my muscles yeah. going to? I was having that like, on are people ever going to listen to the show anymore? Like, yeah. I need to release something today. I need to do something tomorrow. Like, yeah. I need to stay relevant. I need to keep going. And mm -hmm. it was just like, the reality is like, you need to be able to like stop. Yeah, because you just burn the fuck out. I think it's a lot harder than I feel like I'm giving it credit mm. for. Like, it's so fucking hard to switch off. Like, so hard, but. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like I've found out a way to do that. What do you listen to? What do you what do you watch? Do you are you a frequent frequenter of something? Series, Ooh. podcasts? Um not necessarily, no, but I think the the hottest thing that I'm doing right now is like if I'm watching T V, if I'm gonna watch a Netflix series. You binge I'm, in it. I'm no, I'm putting my phone in like the opposite room. So I am 100% watching this show and I'm going to be obsessed with it. What are you watching? I watched Tell me, man. Blackbird on Apple TV the other the day. The one where he goes into jail. Oh, have you watched it? I've seen half of it because I was probably on my phone. Dude, but yeah. see, it was like the best series I this ever watched. This is the one where he goes in and has to try and yes. get the guy to... And it's based on a true story. Yeah. Loved it. So good. I 100% recommend it. Um, <laughs> Nina, what's goals? What's like, what's the plan? I know you're on, you're on a really big break, but then yeah. how do you like, when do you sort of start coming back in and being like, all right, let's zero in. And then after that, yep. two-parter, choose your own adventure here, professional goals for athlete. Yeah. That didn't make sense. Professional goals for athletics and, and pole vaulting and then <laughs> professional goals for, um, you know, what else you want to do in your life. Yeah. Um, and I know that's 100% into sport, but, like, where do you want to go with it? Because, like, it's unbelievable. And a question I actually had as a part of that too is around your social media, like, you have nearly just under 200,000 followers. Where did – when did that – is that just, like, a slow grind or did that, like, just um, acquire – I think it's, like – I think athletics is a quite a big sport. Yeah. In America – in Europe, you know, everywhere but Australia. So I feel like I'm probably living in the wrong country. But a lot of those followers are from overseas. Really? Yeah. Like athletic, you know, if you go to a track in Europe, there are like kids running around. Like everyone does the sport, you know, like there are like our AFL is like their athletics. Like everyone does it. You know, you're going to London Diamond League and there's, you know, just on a random Saturday and there's 60,000 fans like screaming, knowing mm. your name. You know, if I went to athletics track down in Melbourne, I, I don't think half the people there would know who I am kind of thing. So, yeah, that's it, a bit of that. Did it, um, did, was it overnight sort of, like not overnight, but was it a, a, a quick riser? I think it's been consistent the whole time. Um, it, it definitely comes in waves, you know, whenever our sport kind of accesses the media yeah. here in Australia, it's, you know, uh, the Olympics, especially in, you know, when we had them in the Gold Coast, like, Hectic. First little hit of followers and media exposure and then it's, you know, the Olympics a few years later and then it's 
world champs then it's birmingham commonwealth games and then you know the olympics like that so just, just a, consistent rise yeah i guess so how good's that um back to the other question because i asked like four in one <laughs> yeah you did so I was about that <laughs> i got excited the yeah professional goals yeah I am excited to see where my career goes. Mm. You know, I obviously won the Olympics and this is going to sound so arrogant, but I don't think I jumped as high as I could have in that oh, final. We love that. Clip that, Mon. Um, Sorry. Put it on the poster. <laughs> you know, if you look you at the that. year before, I cleared 490 on my third attempt and I scraped that bar. Like I just got over it. Yeah. You watch the Olympics, I cleared 490, first attempt, bombed it. Like there was so much more. And When you said bombed it the first time, yeah. I thought you meant like Stuffed stacked. Up. And then I was like, bombed it means you, you, you it. smashed it. You yeah. it, right? Yeah. Um, and I just didn't have to jump higher, which is, you know, it is what it is. Um, I don't think I've hit my potential. I don't think I've hit my limits. The five meter club is a really big thing in our sport. There's only Sick. four women to have ever done that in the whole history to a Russian that's a, you know, take that as you want and, and, and to a American, sorry, <laughs> please don't. Yeah, I don't know when let's not go to Russia. clips that, but yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm excited to see what I can do. And I, I think in this weird phase of my career as well, like back to that investment thing, it's like, I'm already thinking like, all right, like this is what I need to do to get like the next thing. Like I need to improve my, I need to take my diet to like the next level because this is the first year where like I finished the season and my body's a bit like creaky, you know? Sore. Yeah. You know, does that mean putting new recovery strategies in place? And, you know, you look like, um, you look at players like um, LeBron and the Tom Brady's and, you know, people and even the Shelly Ann Fraser Price, the 100 meter Jamaican champion, she had a baby, she didn't come back. She, you know, won the Olympics. It's, it really is possible. You just mm. have to work out how to do it. So I kind of, I'm excited to see you know, how much better I can get. It's so cool because, um, you know, before this as well, it was like almost hard to be like, you know, once you win gold, like yeah. you can win another one and another one, but it's like, is there anything else? Like five meter club is a, is a really cool thing to chase. For sure. Five meter club, um, you know, world record isn't that far off that five meters. What's the world record? It's 506. Okay. Um, so winning was 491? 490, yeah. 490. Yeah. So it seems like a lot, but. You can get there. I don't know. I, I'm excited to try. And I think that's something I really learned this season was like, if I can dream I re as big as you can. And I reckon she's already written it down. So I reckon you've already written it down in the diary. Right. You're just not telling me yet. The world record. It. Yeah, <laughs> she's got it. Um, marginal gains. Yeah. You said before about dietary um, recovery, all those things for your body. Mm -hmm. In the gym. Yeah. You hectic? I'm pretty hectic. Yeah. I love the gym. What are you doing? Is it a lot of lowers? Um, like fast twitch fiber sort of like yeah, like yeah i'm a full power athlete right yeah. like fully power um just body to weight ratio stuff like power to weight ratio yeah. stuff um a lot of upper body like, where's the main strength that you need for pole like is it arms or is it it's it's kind of like your whole chain right yeah. it's about being strong in each you know your right legs core arms but it's about connecting all yeah. of that in a really dynamic way um you know in the gym for example like i'm doing pull ups with like 50 kilos around my waist. Like we're going pretty hardcore. Like we're benching 80 kilos. We're benching, we're benching we're, 80. We're, 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 we're benching 80 for three. That's uh, not bad. That's pretty good. That's what well, mom's pretty All impressive. the boys are going to eye roll. They're like, dude, shut up. It's nothing near me. Um, yes, but like you're also probably half their weight. Like 80 kilos for three is very impressive. Thank you. What are you, what are you squatting? I have a really dodgy back. So I'm belt squatting the opposite way. I don't oh, know you go up. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. You Have put you it up and you machine? go up. Yeah, I did this. Man, I once squatted. Yeah. To a, um, everyone's listening to this. Can I go shut the fuck up? Because I like am obsessed with squats. My back's like cooked as well. Okay. When I say obsessed, I'm obsessed of thinking about doing squats. I don't actually do them that much. <laughs> Wait, do you have lifting shoes? No. Oh. No, I couldn't wear them, mate. Okay. Like, okay. As in, I would wear them, but I'd just get, in, I, I'd yeah. wear the gloves if they weren't like cringe. Like I'd, you I'd wear it. You should just do it. You should <laughs> no, see how, yeah, how much no. better you get. <laughs> I couldn't do it. Back to the story was that I was actually squatting once and I thought, we're well, squatting to box. Yep. Nice um, low box. Yep. And someone had lifted the box up without me knowing and I'd gone down <gasps> and crunched my fucking back like, no joke. Like I crunched my disc. Yeah. So I've just since then just been scared to like 
be squatting. But that mm. I've done that one of the giants where you put the belt on and you like step it up. It's pretty yeah. cool. And um, this probably just a thing for me, but like I transitioned to that to take the pressure off my lower back and my strength and my legs just astronomically mm. grew. I don't know what it was, but I just got so much longer. It's elite. Yeah. So cool. Um, Nina, you're a star. I hope I haven't weirded you out today too much with all my strange questions, but um, congratulations Thanks. on everything you've done. You're an absolute weapon. Um, so honoured to, to get you in the studio. Could be our could be our first gold medalist. Surely you've had someone else? I don't think we have. Hey, well, don't, if you it don't, is, you, I you don't get them out of cereal boxes, mate. <laughs> like They're pretty hard to get. No, no, like 100%. Epic. That's so cool. Yeah, they're they're yeah, they're not common. Damn. Where do you keep it? The medal. Oh, I feel like I shouldn't say yeah. this on the pod. Yeah. Well, I ki- well. You don't want to get it stolen. Well, that's the thing. I live in a share house and we keep our door unlocked all the bloody time. Don't so I'm tell not going to. Nah. Gonna yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah. Good call. Um. No, nah, I really appreciate it. Best of luck with your break have fun thanks and um yeah just looking forward to, to keeping up with your career and joining that five meter club thanks it'll be sick it was so good to chat thanks for having thank me thank you very much